And everybody here knows that I have programs that are paid for in my state, out of my state's budget, that are frankly redundant, unnecessary, and even perhaps counterproductive of human well-being. But they, they have a certain political corrective standing that I cannot touch them. I remember at the National, uh, National Endowment for the Arts. First of all, if you happen to believe, as I do, in art as a good thing for a culture, where freedom in the arts is a good thing, you ought to be slightly offended by a national government program that endorses good art versus bad art. Uh, that should be seen as something like censorship by the government. So the program itself should be seen by artists, I would argue, as obnoxious. But I remember I tried to cut that program many times. And here's a kind of an interesting, probably the best example of the political correctness obstacle. I had a friend, and this was probably the best Freudian slip I ever made in, while in office. I had a friend from upstate New York, you know, they're kind of, New York's a little bit loose anyway. I said, uh, I'm from Texas, I can say these things. Uh, I said, uh, you think I could get you to vote with me on my, oh, no, 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 I can't possibly vote for that. I said, well, why can't you vote for that? Well, you know, I know you're right, but you see, back home, my wife's the chairman of the Arts League. And so, I mean, I could see the handwriting on that wall. So I walked away, somebody said, did you get old so-and-so's vote? I said, no, not in this wife time. <laughs> so, you, and you know, with the programs that you know shouldn't be there, the problems you have in terms of the curious kind of identities they have. So when you make these allocated decisions, the toughest part is how do I find a place where I can make reductions in order to get these resources reallocated over here towards more price? By the way, universities have the same problem. You can have a wholly redundant French department, uh, and you cannot remove faculty from there in order to expand the computer science department, irrespective of the student loan. Uh, it, is a frustra it should frustrate you to tears, because in your own home, in your own budget, in your business, you're free to make these decisions. And they become obstacles. Again, you do these re reallocative decisions uh, in the in the state and local level much more effectively than at the federal level simply because you must. There is no other way. Now what your pressures will be in these circumstances you're facing, of course, first of all, raise taxes. And frankly, what is fascinating to me, and I've seen this in public life for years, raising taxes on all the people is always politically e more easily done than cutting programs for some of the people. And that is, of course, the great dilemma of public choice theory, the triumph of the special interest over the public interest. And so the pressures will come to you. And I would argue that if you're an ALEC, I reckon that makes you a small government conservative. Am I correct? I, I do have the right outfit here, don't I? <laughs> By the way, I, I, let me give you my personal gu guidelines for small government conservatism. To me, a, 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 a small government conservative believes that there should be no government action taken unless it meets two tests. The first test being that it be the right thing to do. And that's a matter, I think, of disciplined judgment, which I think is a judgment that should be associated to some degree with the Constitution, which is a marvelous document. I don't know how many of you looked at it. The, the, the Constitution of the United States was written by what are very likely the most intelligent and courageous people ever in the history of this land. These were the entrepreneurs that created a nation and created a model of democracy that lasts today 
and still stands today as the best model for the world. These people should be respected. And I might say that the Constitution was not carelessly written. It was written in full knowledge and awareness of the meaning of words within the English language. And I like to remind a lot of my liberal friends that those folks that wrote the Constitution knew what the meaning of the word is was and they wrote exactly what the hell they meant. <laughs> so you don't need to interpret it. If you have problems, get a dictionary because that's what they relied upon. So when you say, is it the right thing to do? I would implore you, please make your reference base that Constitution. That, by the way, is the only thing you swore allegiance to when you were sworn into office. Do you realize that every person in America who gets sworn into office at every level in every state swears a oath to the Constitution? Not to your party, not to your majority leader, albeit they're oftentimes worthy. <laughs> not to the speaker, not to the governor, not to the president, not to the party, to the Constitution. And that's a sacred oath that reflects the privilege you have to serve on behalf of your friends and neighbors. They chose you. And you ought to feel quite complimented they did that and have some sense of duty and responsibility to them. And what base do you have? That Constitution, I think, is the ground you stand on. So is it the right thing to do? That's the first test. Then the necessary test is, is it necessary? Government shouldn't do the right thing if it's not necessary. And why do I argue that? Because most of your life is a world of free and voluntary transactions. Who do I marry? Who do I associate with? What church do I attend? With whom do I do business? And free and voluntary transactions are always intellectually and morally superior to compelled transactions. And the function of government is to compel you to do what you will not do voluntarily. For good or bad, for better or worse, what government does is compel you to do what you will not do voluntarily. Now that might be to restrain somebody from killing his neighbor. That's a good thing. It might be to restrain somebody from stealing his neighbor's property. That's a good thing. All government is not bad, but all government is, in fact, the use of the force of the state to control behavior. And therefore, it is always morally and intellectually inferior to free action. Freedom being a gift given to mankind and mankind alone by the Lord God Almighty. It is the duty of governments to protect freedom. And you can protect freedom by not doing the right thing if it's not necessary. So that's my personal opinion. Now, your, your problem is now you're coming into a time in your office, as you are in office, where your budget constraints tightening down, revenues are slacking off, and demands are growing, and how do you live within your means against the, frankly, relatively easy and easily rationalized temptation, let's just go raise taxes. That's the easy way out. But I would argue it is not the disciplined way out, and for people of our persuasion, it's not the responsible way out. If you want people to raise taxes, relax. There are more than enough to go around. You don't really have to be one of them. <laughs>